What is going on, everybody? It's Bronson. We're here for our predictions for TLC Tables, Ladders, and Chairs coming to you this Sunday on the WWE Network with 12. That's right, 12 matches as we stand right now. Hopefully, nothing gets added as well because we do not have anything for the pre show, quote unquote, yet. But we do have 12 matches to go over. The first one, of course, is the Mixed Match Challenge Finals, which is the Fabulous Truth, Our Truth and Carmella versus Mahalisha, which is Jinder Mahal and Alicia Fox. Now, when this Mixed Match Challenge started, we had guys like, we had male and female, men and women like Braun Strowman, Ember Moon, um, Bailey. We had Sasha Banks, I believe, was in this somewhere. Oh, wait, she was, I think she was supposed to, yeah, she was supposed to be with Bobby, Bobby Lashley, but that didn't happen. Mickey James, Bobby Lashley. We had... Uh, the Miz and Asuka, and, the f and many others. And the finals ends up being Fabulous Truth, Our Truth, and Carmella versus Jinder Mahal and Alicia Fox. This spells pre-show right away. It's plain and simple. I have not watched a single match of the Mixed Match Challenge. I don't want to see a single match of the Mixed Match Challenge. But I think the Fabulous Truth are going to win this match because Vince McMahon is, it has come out, Multiple times, I believe, that Vince McMahon it really loves the dance breaks for SmackDown Live. That's why we see him all, every so often. So, Maha, but, so, Fabulous Truth will end up probably winning this because if they don't win, then you just break them up and then they go on their way. You have them win. They're going to be the top, the number 30 in their respective Royal Rumbles. And then you go on from there. So, that is what I'm thinking on the Mixed Match Challenge, which should be the final, should be on the pre-show, plain and simple. Then we have Seth Rollins versus Dean Ambrose for the Intercontinental title. I'm just on the Wikipedia page and I'm going up to down. I don't really care what order these are in, but I'm just going from 1 to 12, however they go. Seth Rollins versus Dean Ambrose. As we all know, a couple months ago, Seth Rollins returned, was, had his, Dean Ambrose tapped Seth Rollins in the back in the middle of October as Roman Reigns was announced, after Roman Reigns announced that he was going to be going away to battle leukemia. And that night was perfect, the perfect way to start a heel turn. It was just great. It was, as Seth Rollins would say in a later interview, you had, they had people talking about this night more than you would probably ever have for the rest of the year. You had, you had um, more eyes on you than you could talk, than, than probably in a sense, more eyes on the product probably for that night since probably Raw 1000 for a bit. And you have Dean Ambrose turn heel. And then we have, for a couple weeks, we have no, no explanation from Dean Ambrose. And everything seemed to be going towards John Moxley version of a Dean Ambrose until fans outcry. Fans outcry that they were using Roman Reigns' leukemia in storyline. So what happens? We go, we're like, oh, gotta hit the pause button, gotta hit the panic button, and we have to take the Dean Ambrose heel turn and change it and go 360 with it and have him bitch and complain about how the fans smell and seeing him getting inoculated by a doctor pulling his pants down to get one up his ass and it's just uh, the, heel, the, the heel run for Dean Ambrose went from shooting off like a rocket looking like it was going to be the best thing on Monday Night Raw to just nose diving and WWE can't ever do anything right that being said, Dean Ambrose is going to win this match. I believe we're going to be seeing Seth Rollins get into the mix for the Universal Championship. Dean Ambrose can go on to face uh, Paula Cruz, I guess, or somebody else. I don't know. I just think it's going to be Dean Ambrose versus Dean Ambrose is going to win this. Braun Strowman versus Baron Corbin TLC match with the winner. If Braun Strowman wins, he gets Brock Lesnar at the Royal Rumble. If Baron Corbin wins, he becomes the permanent general manager. If Baron Corbin loses, he loses all power, all raw authority, and I believe that is what's going to happen. I think Braun Strowman, who has been out with injury, not a big injury, it was bone chips, I believe it was, that was getting cleaned out from his elbow. If they really wanted to, they could just wrap his elbow up. And power slam, and that's that. I see Braun Strowman is going to win this, so they can have that match at WrestleMania, uh, not WrestleMania, but the Royal Rumble for Braun Strowman and Brock Lesnar, so they can get the Brock Lesnar and Braun Strowman match out of the way as we get towards WrestleMania. And Baron Corbin has done his time. People are getting fed up with this entire storyline, and it's time to move on. 
Ronda Rousey versus Nia Jax. This was an easy one. I'm predicting that my Ronda Rousey will win this one. I'm hoping in less than a minute to go in. Ronda Rousey just goes in, the armbar, tap her out. That's it. Nobody's going to care. We have 12 matches. This show it looks like it's going to be a four-hour pay-per-view. Just for the fact that we had 12 matches, two TLC matches, a, a tables match, a chairs match, and I believe we have, we have, we have a ladder match, I guess. They could totally will be suspended above the rain with the Elias match. We have all those matches, and those matches are going to take a good bit of time. So this definitely is going to feel like it's going to start at 7 and not get done until 11-ish, hopefully, 11-ish. But Ronda Rousey versus Nia Jax, if you wanted to shorten the match, this would be one of those. Ronda Rousey, just go in, beat her down, and that's that. Daniel Bryan versus AJ Styles. I am looking forward to this match for sure. If you all remember, the week, the Tuesday, the go-home show before we got to Survivor Series, Daniel Bryan, AJ Styles challenged Daniel Bryan to a WWE Championship opportunity. Shane said it's on tonight, titles on the line, because they were fighting at the beginning of the show. Daniel Bryan kicks the AJ Styles in the balls when the referee is not looking, running knee, one, two, three, and he became our WWE champion. Now, he has become the evil vegan who hates to, he hates consumption or consumption of everything. He wants to talk about GMOs and everything else. He had a great match against Mustafa. A good match, I wouldn't say a great match, a good match against Mustafa Ali this past Tuesday, which still is scratching your head. I hopefully will have information on that this coming Saturday for Unscripted. Um, but Daniel Bryan comes out and he went from being the people, some people are going to cheer him, some people are going to boo him. He got on Miss TV, took his yes movement, his yes, yes, yes plates and threw them down. Doesn't matter where they got it from. But Daniel Bryan has gone from being the most beloved character on the main roster to one of the most hated characters on the main roster. And he is playing his part to a T. I have a feeling that he has creative pool in this character and how it goes. Because if Vince McMahon had creative character or creative pool in how this goes, Daniel Bryan would not be doing what he's doing. He'd probably be doing what Dean Ambrose is doing. Saying that we smell and just doing the whole you people thing. Daniel Bryan is probably one of the best heel characters on, like in the WWE. Second behind Tommaso Ciampa because Tommaso Ciampa is just the heel king right now. Daniel Bryan just became WWE champion before Survivor Series and I don't see them taking the title off of him so fast. Now, this has been a running theme since WrestleMania for a title with a WWE championship match, a WWE championship feud with AJ Styles. This match, I have a feeling, is going to not be the first, is not going to be the last match between these two. Daniel Bryan is going to retain the championship. But it's going to be a fuck finish, and this will be your championship match at the Royal Rumble. Which would make three years in a row, technically, that AJ Styles, well, four. Right, right, right? Yeah, four. 2016, he came in and he was in the Royal Rumble match, which was for the WWE Championship. 2016. Um, 2017, he was he defended the title. 2018, he defended the title. If this carries over to the Royal Rumble next year, next month, AJ Styles would have, that would probably be I think the first time ever that somebody has challenged for the WWE Championship after Royal Rumble or was part of the WWE Championship match. If they go that way, and quite honestly, there really is no one else for Daniel Bryan to defend his title against right now. So I do not see this kind of having a clean finish. It's just been like that since WrestleMania with Shinsuke Nakamura after Shinsuke Nakamura lost clean. The very next two pay-per-views had fuck finishes as they continued to go on, and then we had Money in the Bank. The only pay-per-view that had a clean finish for the WWE Championship since WrestleMania has been Extreme Rules. Because then you had Samoa Joe come in, and he didn't, like, we had SummerSlam and Hell in a Cell, then we had, I think we, they wrestled again at Crown Jewel. Yeah, not, they, they did a Crown Jewel. I'm pretty sure they did a Super Showdown as well. And it's just, this is the first of probably many, this is the, not the first, but this is like the second or third of many championship opportunities between these two. This time Daniel Bryan is champion. So Daniel Bryan is going to retain his championship by a DQ. They're not going to, because quite honestly, 
if Daniel Bryan won this match clean and AJ Styles was out of the championship opportunity picture, who are they going to have? Rey Mysterio? No. Jeff Hardy? No. They'll be in the Royal Rumble. This championship, Matt, this championship is going to be defended at, at the Royal Rumble between Daniel Bryan and AJ Styles in hopefully some kind of stipulation. Maybe a last man standing match, maybe a um, Falls County Anywhere match, something that would end up clean. It's either going to be here, at the, it's either going to be at the Royal Rumble or the Elimination Chamber <clears throat> where these two will finish. We'll just have to wait and see, but Daniel Bryan will retain his championship, but not in, by, by a clean slate. Becky Lynch versus Charlotte Flair versus Oscar. Now, this should be your main event. It has been built, and in pretty much Becky Lynch should be in the main event of any pay-per-view that she is in, plain and simple. This one is going to be interesting because two weeks, it was two or three weeks ago, Charlotte Flair and Becky Lynch were just bickering and bickering in front of Paige, and Paige is like, you know what, you'll get your opportunity at TLC, Charlotte, without even earning it, because at Evolution, that was done, it was over, there was no more between these two. And now we have a TLC. The reason that we have Oscar in this match was twofold, because one, if they had to have a backup plan where Becky Lynch could not make TLC, they, they had Oscar thrown in there just to have eight, so if they had to vacate the title, he would have Charlotte versus Oscar in a TLC match with the winner getting the championship. I honestly say Oscar needs to win this. Because if you want to have the storyline of these of Becky and Charlotte going to try and face to try and take care of business against Ronda Rousey, these two have to be in the Royal Rumble. Have to be. They have to be in the Women's Royal Rumble. You don't want to have Ronda Rousey, who's going to be... Because if they're going to do what they did last year for the women, they're going to do it again this year probably too, where the two champions are going to be sitting outside watching the match to see who's going to potentially challenge one or the other. You don't want to have Becky or Charlotte sitting there beside Ronda Rousey who want to sit there and tear her arm off or tear her face off, and they have to sit there with just a smile on their face and pretending like nothing's happening. They're not like pretending like they don't want to go over there and kill them. So those two should be in the Royal Rumble. It should come down to Nia Jax, Charlotte, and Becky Lynch. We'll get to that later. And Becky ends up winning the Royal Rumble. Or you do something, you do another thing. We'll talk about that next month when we get to the Royal Rumble. But Asuka should win this. I'm going to probably be completely wrong. But Asuka should win this. It's an easy setup for Mandy Rose, Sonya Deville, or Naomi, or all three to take on Asuka at the, T at the Royal Rumble. I mean, Naomi makes sense because, one, these two are quote-unquote friends. They tagged for a couple months together. So Naomi could come out and be like, listen, I know how good you are. I know I'm good. Let's settle this at the Royal Rumble in a women's championship match or somehow have Naomi earn the spot, and it could be built on respect. Not every championship match has to be heel versus baby face. It could be face versus face, heel versus heel, no. Unless it's like the proper heel, but no. So Asuka and Naomi should be a women's championship match going into the Royal Rumble with these two facing off at the Royal Rumble in the Royal Rumble match. Finn Balor versus Drew McIntyre. Not going to go really into this. Drew McIntyre is going to win that one easily because he is the next big thing for WWE Smack Monday Night Raw. He should be, in my opinion, he should be the one going to WrestleMania to face Brock Lesnar for the Universal Championship and dethroning the Beast. That would put him on the level of superstardom. Bobby Lashley versus Elias, and I guess a lot of match. Guitar will be suspended above the ring, and the first retriever will, can use it as a weapon. Why? Why are we going to take an on a pole match and just make it a ladder match? Why would you take a guitar and a pole match and remove the pole and give us a ladder instead? I would have rather seen the... That's just wasting a ladder match, in my opinion. That is just wasting a ladder match 110%. I would rather have seen Mustafa, not, uh, Cedric Alexander and Buddy Murphy in a ladder match. I would rather see the New Day in the bar in the Usos in a ladder match. But this is the ladder match we get? Oh, give me a break. Bobby Lashley's probably going to win this one just because, you know, heel's got a heel. Speaking of the bar, the Usos and the New Day triple threat match for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. 
I'm going with the Usos. The Bard probably are going to lose their championships. They did show up. They did come out strong in the rap battle segment this past Tuesday. They've had themselves an okay title run since SmackDown Live 1000, in which the Big Show helped them win the titles. So I'm going with the Usos. The New Day, the New Day have seen their day. I do not want to see another championship reign for the New Day. Give them to the Usos. Have New Blood come in, aka the Sanities, or the Good Brothers, or that's really it, isn't it? Yeah, that's about it. Let me see here. Who named Usos? Who named Good Brothers? Yeah, that's about it. Just give Sanity and the Good Brothers of Colonus and Luke Gallows some time. The New Day have seen the day. They can go off and be the comedy act. The bar, it's whatever. But, uh, it's, I'm going with the Usos. No one else you can say that. Ruby Riot and Natalia in a tables match. This would actually be the second, I believe, the second women's table match. The first being Natalia and Beth Phoenix versus Lee Cool from like 10 years ago, it feels like. Um, I'm going with Natalia. This entire feud, this entire feud, this entire tables match is all hearkened off of a pair of sunglasses that Jimmy and Vanilla Hart supposedly wore when he, was, when he was, went, walked to the ring 20, years, 20 plus years ago, 30 years ago. Um, first and foremost, I'm pretty sure Jim the Anvil Nightheart had like two boxes or more, maybe five boxes of these sunglasses for himself. I guarantee you this guy never wore the same pair of sunglasses twice. Like just having to tell you walk out and say, I'm wearing my dad's shades to the ring for this match tonight is it was just stupid. Anybody should have saw it, saw it coming a mile away that you had this woman come out with a pair of quote unquote quote unquote sunglasses that were supposedly her dad's. Did you expect them not to be destroyed? Did you expect them not to be destroyed? And like her overactive is like, my dad's glasses, my dad's glasses are broken, oh my god, I gotta cry. Are you kidding me? It was cringy, it was stupid, and it, like, anybody felt sorry for a pair of fucking glasses. Give me a break. You could probably find that pair of sunglasses on eBay for, like, ten bucks. Or at Walmart for, like, ten bucks, if that. It was like, now when, if she, when she came down with his jacket on and she, they would have ripped up that jacket, that's fine because that would have been a different story. Even though I'm pretty sure he wore, he didn't wear the same jacket every day for the rest of his, for, the, for his entire career. Or when he was part of the Hart Foundation. Like you have Natalia, like, and then you had Natalia come out. Mentioned the Montreal screw job this past Monday, which made no sense whatsoever. She's like, "Oh, I didn't get here on my name recognition. I on my on my family name." I'm like, "Please, Natalia, who are you lying to? Your first night when you were introduced by Victoria back in what was it, 2008, 2009, 2010, whatever it was. Victoria came out and was like, "This is Natalia Nyhart. You hear that last name? Nyhart. She is Jim Neandel Nyhart's daughter, son, um, daughter." And it's like, yeah, so you had, you didn't, you didn't get here on any name recognition? Bullshit. And the fact that you mentioned the Montreal screw job as being something you had to, a hurdle you had to overcome, again, bullshit. So, like, and you come out when you were here disgracing your family name saying, oh, I'm Natty, I'm Natalia, not her. I, it's like, you're having, WWE in their selective memory is just retarded. Absolutely retarded. When you had Ruby Riot come out and say that she that Natalia has disgraced her family's name, she was actually right, one hundred percent. And then she put out then she brought out a table emblazoned with Jim the Anvil Nyhood's picture. I thought that was funny. But this is WWE and you can't make you can't badmouth a legend without getting your comeuppance and it's gonna happen to Ruby Riot. I will, the only positive out of this match happening, because I think the feud is utterly ridiculous, is the fact that Ruby Riot actually gets a, pay, a spot on the pay-per-view. And I'm hoping it's actually on the pay-per-view and not the pre-show, because Ruby Riot is that good, and Natalya is a great wrestler. But the feud is just stupid. Absolutely stupid. Ruby Riot will be going through a table unless they have the Riot Squad get involved. Maybe they have somebody come down and help Natalya, because I don't think Natalya is being part of the Ronda Rousey thing right now. 
But Natalia, versus Zuby Wyatt is going to Natalia. Buddy Murphy versus Cedric Alexander for the Cruiserweight Championship. I was hoping this would be your ladder match. Could you imagine Cedric Alexander and then Buddy Murphy in the 205 Lives Buddy Murphy, 205 Lives Juggernaut Buddy Murphy in a ladder match? I would absolutely love a ladder match between these two, and I think they could steal the show. I still think if they're given enough time, they could steal the show. And if this is going four hours, these guys should get more at least 20 minutes to do what they need to do. 20, 25 minutes. That's what they need. And that's after the bell. The, the entrances don't count. Buddy Murphy is winning this match. There's no doubt about it. The, the um, Cruiserweight Championship was just won by him and back in the beginning of October. Because quite honestly, him having the championship has been more beneficial to 205 Live over when Cedric Alexander had it. As I said, Cedric Alexander won the title of WrestleMania in, on the pre-show. The next time it was defended was on, on pay-per-view or a special event was at the Greatest Royal Rumble. The next time after that, which of course was a couple weeks later, so that was fine. The next time we saw it on a pay-per-view was SummerSlam's pre-show. SummerSlam's pre-show. That is May, June, and July. Four months. Or three months. Yeah, three months. Three, like four months-ish between title defenses on pay-per-view. And then we didn't see it again until October. Another two months until we got it at a special event. But since Cedric Bunny Murphy has had the championship, it has been on the SummerSlam, it's been on the Survivor Series main card. And I'm hoping and praying this is going to be on the summer, the, the TLC main card. So, when it comes to exposure for the championship, I'm going with Buddy Murphy to keep it for the fact that he just got it a couple months ago. Cedric Alexander had it for like half the year. It's good. It, like 205 Live having a cruiserweight champion in Buddy Murphy is in better hands than Cedric Alexander. There's nothing wrong with Cedric Alexander as a champion or as a competitor. I still want to see Seth Rollins versus um, Cedric Alexander somewhere down the line. But Buddy Murphy is keeping the championship for multiple reasons. And then number 12 of these 12 matches, Rey Mysterio versus Randy Orton in a chairs match. Rey Mysterio came back, of course, at SmackDown Live 1000, kind of floated around, didn't do anything until we got to the greatest, until we got to the World Cup where he beat Randy Orton. And then Randy Orton beat him down after that match, which caused him to lose the next match. And Randy Orton has come after Rey Mysterio ever since. Rey Mysterio, of course, got beat by Randy Orton a couple weeks ago, had his mask destroyed, had his like face, his head put through a chair and thrown into the ring post. The very next week, he had a his, his like throat crushed onto a chair being thrown into the stairs. And then, of course, this week, Randy Orton, cutting a promo, gets attacked from behind, and we have ourselves a chairs match. Now, like I said on Tuesday... I honestly think that Rey Mysterio and Randy Orton, if done right, which a chairs match has never been done right because it's really not, it's really a stipulation that was thrown in there because tables matches and ladder matches are fine and it could be good to fine to bad to great. And like, well, wow. Mm. Somewhere in 2000, when they were making these pay per views, Vince was like, wow, we have a table match, we have a ladder match, um, we still have a C, we have a chairs match, chairs match, let's do a chairs match. Of course, that one was the first one was Undertaker versus Batista, where Batista used another weapon. Teddy Long was like, "No, no, 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 no! You can't use anything but a chair." So we start the match, and Undertaker ended up winning. But I'm saying Randy Orton is going to win this one. There is absolutely no reason that Randy Orton should lose in this the state that he is in. If a babyface, like if a babyface, if Rusev beats. Um, Shinsuke Nakamura for the United States Championship somewhere down the line, or maybe it's like, I'd say Randy Orton could win it back, or after he's done with Rey Mysterio, maybe he goes after AJ Styles, maybe he goes after, oh but well, it's not the only other person he can go for is really is AJ Styles so, I think, because Daniel Bryan did turn heel and they're not going to have a heel versus heel program, I think after right, this match, Rey Mysterio and Randy Orton are done. Randy Orton wins and moves on to Jack AJ Styles. The only time they really had a one-on-one -on -one match together was a a when they decided they had. I think it was after Randy Orton decided I'm in the Wyatt family. I'm not going to face Bray Wyatt at the 
um, at WrestleMania. AJ Styles ended up winning a contenders match to face off against AJ against Bray Wyatt, and then Andy Orton's like, you know what? I'm coming for your title. I'm going to destroy this place of yours. And then him and AJ Styles had a match to determine who was actually going to go on to WrestleMania. And of course, Randy Orton won that match and went to WrestleMania and had a boring ass match between him and Bray Wyatt. So Randy Orton is in a spot right now to where he needs to beat Rey Mysterio and then he moves on to AJ Styles after AJ Styles. See, Randy Orton. <sighs> Randy Orton could probably help Daniel Bryan win this one, or when we get to the Royal Rumble, if AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan continue this feud, Randy Orton cost AJ Styles the victory, which leads to them feuding up to the Elimination Chamber, possibly Fastlane, which is, yes, still happening, and then I don't know what happens for those two for WrestleMania. But that is my preview and predictions. We'll go over them quickly here again. We have the Fabulous Truth, Our truth and Carmella beating Mahalisha. Seth Rollins losing his Intercontinental title to Dean Ambrose. Braun Strowman over Baron Corbin. Ronda Rousey over Nia Jax in less than a minute. Daniel Bryan over AJ Styles. Oscar over Charlotte Flair and Becky Lynch. Drew McIntyre is going to beat the hell out of and destroy Finn Balor. Bobby Lashley will beat Elias because somewhere in WWE's corporate, corporate people, they want to push Bobby Lashley. The Usos over the bar in the New Day, Natalia over Ruby Riot, Buddy Murphy over Cedric Alexander, and Randy Orton over Rey Mysterio. That is my predictions. Let me know in the comment section below who you think are going to win each match for TLC coming to you live on Sunday. This Sunday, December 5th, 4th, 16th? Yeah. December 16th, 2018, as we get closer to Royal Rumble season, which technically starts the next night. But that is my predictions. I will be here on Saturday tomorrow for our, uh, our Unscripted as well as Sunday for our TLC review as we will go over each and every match and my thoughts and everything as we head towards and my thoughts of what, we be, what could be happening coming out of TLC as we head to the Royal Rumble. But I'm getting out of here. Find me on Twitter at TheFrance. Find me on Twitch.tv slash TheFrance08. Hit that subscribe button. Comment down below. Like or dislike this video. And I will see you guys tomorrow for Unscripted.